Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about printing black and white photography with the Epson XP970 printer. So the Epson XP970 is a great little printer. It's not quite up there with the Prospect printers, it's more aimed at the consumer end of the market. But for the money, you do get a really good printer and it's great for printing photos. I did a little video a while back where I was talking all about the printer, I was unboxing it for the first time and doing some test prints. And since then I've done another video on different paper types. And on that video, a YouTube user called Pippin Slim left a comment asking what the black and white print quality was like. So this video is gonna be all about printing a black and white shot. And this is the shot we're gonna print. And this shot was taken at Bergelz in Germany earlier this year in the summer. If you haven't seen that video, you can go back and watch it now. I'll put a link up top. But it was a great location and I got this fantastically moody shot of the castle with a bit of mist around the top of it. And this particular shot I thought would look really good in black and white. But before we go ahead and print the image, we're going to talk a little bit about the considerations you might want to make when printing a black and white image with the Epson XP970. So it basically boils down to two things. One, the type of image you're printing and two, the paper that you're choosing to use. So if you've got quite a high contrast image, that's where there are not many grey tones, it's mainly black and white. So for example, you might have a picture of, I don't know, say an egg, quite well lit against quite a dark black background. And you've only mainly got the white and the black there, not much greys in between, that's a high contrast image. Or you could have a landscape image, for example, which has got the fields and grasses and sky, and there are lots of gradations of tone in the image. That would tend to be a low contrast image because you've got lots of greys. And also you might want to think about what the subject of your image is. So for example, it could be something like an architecture shot of a building. It might have glass panels and it might be really glossy and shiny. Or it might be, say, a picture of a bird or an animal which is furry or feathery and it's got a lot of texture in it. All these things will be affected by the paper that you use. And there's a huge range of different papers out there. And it's a very subjective and personal choice that you're going to make about paper. But there are some factors that might make you want to consider one type of paper or the other. I tend to use two different papers. One is Photospeed NST 315. That's a matte, very slightly textured paper. And Canson Infinity Photographic 2. That's a brighter paper. And that's more of a semi-gloss feel. So in general, a gloss paper or a semi-gloss will tend to have richer blacks when printing a black and white image, or any image for that matter. But just the type of paper it is, it will have more density and the blacks will just look richer and blacker. Uh, it will also be slightly reflective, so bear that in mind if you're going to be showing the picture on a wall and it's in a brightly lit room, you might get some reflection on that surface. And gloss or semi-gloss papers tend to be smooth. You can get textured ones, but they tend to be a bit smoother than more matte papers. You'll find that when printing blacks on a matte paper, they'll tend to not be quite as rich as the ones on the gloss or semi-gloss papers. They'll look a little bit more faded or washed out, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes that looks really good, but they'll not be quite as dense, uh, like I said, as some of the more shiny papers. There is a rating you get with papers called the D-Max rating. So look for, if you want rich dark blacks, look for a paper with a high D-Max rating. You get less reflection on a matte paper and you've also got a bigger range of textures usually. And a texture might just emphasize some of the features in your image. Like I said, if you're taking a picture of say fields with grass or clouds or an animal which is feathery or fluffy, the texture in the paper might really complement that in your, in your image. Whereas, like I said, if you're taking a picture of a building that's made of metal or glass, the more glossy finish of a gloss or semi-gloss paper might complement that better. And also think about how bright white the paper is. The Photospeed NST315 is a little bit whiter than the Canson Barista paper. So, that can have an effect on your image as well. So when doing a print for the first time, you're gonna to have to do a few tests before you get it right. This was the first attempt I made. This is on the Canson Barita paper. 
You'll see there it's got a little bit of a sheen. And you'll see how rich the blacks are and how dense they are and how dark it is. Now this image is supposed to be quite moody, but I did find that perhaps just a little too dark in some of these areas around the edges. So I did do another version of that where I brightened it up a little bit, not a lot, and I don't know if you can see it really on screen there, but it is a little bit more brighter. I brought out some of the shadow detail in some of these areas. And this is quite high contrast on this paper. So the image itself is not particularly high contrast. There's quite a lot of grays in there, but you'll notice on this paper that these areas are quite bright white compared, or particularly these areas, compared to the surrounding blacks. And so I made some quite strong adjustments to the exposure and the shadow detail to really bring that up. And that's probably the best one that I got on the Canson paper. So I brought the exposure up quite a bit on that. My original image looked right on screen, but I had to adjust it so that it would look right when printed. So bear that in mind that what you see on screen is not necessarily how it's gonna look when it prints out. And then this is the first attempt on the PhotoSpeed NST315 paper. And normally I make my black and white prints on the Canson paper because I do quite like those rich blacks. However, this particular image, because it is not particularly high contrast, works much better on the photo speed paper, I think. Because there's a very slight texture to the paper, I think that adds something because you've got the texture in the castle and the surrounding trees. And that's complemented by the very slight texture in the paper. And I think that the the slightly whiter colour of this paper compared to the Canson actually helps that tonal range within the image. However, something to note, and I don't know if you can see this, I'll hold it up here. There's a very small dot of cyan ink, which has dropped onto the print. And also there's some black kind of scuff marks in the corner there. So, that's ruined the print basically, and generally nine times out of 10, I don't have any problems with the printer, but on rare occasions, it does do something like that. So it's something to bear in mind if you are getting that printer. But I did do a second version on the photo speed paper, and I think that one came out the best overall. That's my favorite, and I'm pretty pleased with that. So yeah, you can get some pretty good prints out of the Epson XP970 printer in black and white. So as you can see, I did quite a lot of prints just to get to a point where I was reasonably happy with that print. And sometimes I might do even more until I'm actually happy with the final print before I start selling it. I do sell my own prints, and if you're interested in getting any, you can head over to my website, robertbishop.uk forward slash buy dash prints. And since you've been so kind to watch the video this far, a special little bonus, if you want to go over to my site and get a print, you can get a half price discount using this code down below. Just put it in at the end when you pay for the print and you'll get 50% off. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have, give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps my channel out. And if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet, then please consider doing so. As I always say, you can click down here on the big red button or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll tune in next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot, everyone, and bye for now.